Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to download and set up Postgres SQL in your machine so you can create databases on your local machine and test them when you're creating and developing your apps. So go to postgresql.org and click on download and select your system. I'm on Mac OS, so I'll select that. And uh, here let's click on download the installer. And this will take us to a page where we select uh, which platform we're on and which version. I've had some problems with uh, version 13 with some uh, compatibility issues with some frameworks. So I'm going to go with 12.4. You can go with 13 and uh, see if that works for you. And uh, I think there isn't any like reason to go for 13. There isn't any massive upgrade. Plus, like most of the hosting services are still not supporting that. So you can't deploy it anyway. All right, it's finished downloading. So let's click on that. All right, I'm going to double click this. And yes, I'm going to give it the permissions. I'm going to type my password. All right, set up. Let's click on next and uh, let's click on next. I'm fine with that. I'm going to select all the tools that comes with it. I'm fine with the path. And here it's going to ask us to type a password for the default user, which is Postgres. I'm going to type a very simple password of root, root, and I'm going to keep the default port and I'm going to not mess with the uh, formatting and stuff. So I'm just going to keep clicking next until it starts installing. So I'm going to wait for that to finish. All right, it's done installing. So asking me to launch the stack builder thing, but I'm not going to need any tools from that. So I'm going to deselect it and click finish. And now if we go to the finder and uh, search for PSQL and hit enter, it opens the terminal and it opens this uh, tool that uh, Postgres comes with. And uh, here I'm going to click enter for the local host server. I just keep clicking enter. And then here it asks us which username. I'm going to go with the default Postgres. And I'm going to type the password that I typed earlier, which is root. And now we're actually into the uh, console of Postgres. So now it's set up and we're in the terminal and uh, we can run any command. So you can do backslash um, L to list all the databases that are in the, um, that are created by default. So you get these three databases. By the way, you can do uh, backslash uh, backslash question mark and hit enter. And it's going to show you all the commands that you can execute to do all the operations that you need to do. Now, one thing that I like to do is um, I don't like to use the default terminal in macOS. I like to use uh, another one, which is iTerm. But to make the PSQL um, available in the iTerm, I need to add the path to Postgres to the paths of the system. So the way we're going to do that, uh, I know the uh, path for Postgres is um, so it should be so uh, slash library, library slash Postgres. SQL slash the version, so that's 12. And then uh, I'm just going to cd into that. So oh, ls, um, yeah, it's the bin folder. Oh, cd bin. So yeah, we need this path. So let's copy this path. So slash library all the way up to bin, copy that. And then uh, I think you need sudo for this. I'm just going to do sudo vim and I'm going to do slash etc slash paths. And I'm going to type my password. And here I'm going to add that path. Oops, I'm going to add that path into these in, into this list and then save that. So escape and call an X and hit enter. And now I think I need to restart my terminal. So I'm just going to restart it. So open that again, uh, make that bigger. And now I should be able to type uh, PSQL. There you go. Now it's asking me um, what's uh, what's uh, what it does by default. If you don't give it a user, it's going to assume that the user is the same as your system user. Now I'm going to escape out of this because I don't have a user called Ahmed, uh, but uh, I can do a, a neat trick where I can create that user so I don't have to do this. So otherwise you have to do this. So PSQL um, dash uh, U and then here I'm going to give the default user Postgres and hit enter. And now I need to type root and there we go. Now I'm logged in. To create the other user, so I'm going to do create user and uh, I'm going to give it the name Ahmed, which is the same as my user. And by the way, if you wanted uppercase, uh, you have to surround it with uh, double quotation marks if you wanted up uppercase. I don't, but I'm just telling you in case you wanted to do that. And I'm going to give it a password. So we're going to say with encrypted password, Ooh, password. And I'm just going to give it the same password root and do a semicolon and hit enter. Okay, I think here we need to do a single um, quotes. Yeah, okay, so now it says create role. It actually created that user, but this user right now doesn't have any permissions. 
So I'm going to give it all permissions by saying alter user Ahmed, and here I'm going to say with super uh, super user semicolon hit enter, and now the user Ahmed has access to everything basically. And don't worry about this; you can always remove this uh, this access and remove users as well if you wanted. So if we do backslash Q and exit, and now if we do uh, PSQL and hit enter, and we do root. Well, actually, uh, there's another problem. It's that if you don't specify a database, it's going to assume by default that you're connecting to the database with the same user of your username. So uh, the solution to this, we can do PSQL. And now we do dash D for database. And let's connect to the Postgres database. Hit enter. And now put your password. And now I'm going to create a database with the same name. So I'll say create database Ahmed semicolon. And now if I uh, quit out of this, now if I say just PSQL without anything, hit enter, uh, put my password, and now I'm actually logged in, and this user has all permissions, so I can create databases as well. So create database test, semicolon, there you go, it says created the database. So backslash L, I can do uh, backslash C to connect, so I can connect to that test database. And there we go, I have permissions to do anything I want, and Postgres is set up on my machine, uh, and I'm good to go. So yeah, that's it guys. Uh, if you like this video, please do drop a like. And if you haven't yet, subscribe and click the bell button because more advanced SQL and ORMs in general tutorials are coming your way. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.